Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. So, in last video we have talked about the Dirichlet kernel and today we would like to integrate this bad boy right here. And I gave this little exercise to a few people and only one person was able to solve it after I gave them a few little um, not too good hints. But he was able to solve it. Gut gemacht, Cedric. <laughs> he was a German boy. This right here might seem easy, but actually it involves some trickery and black math magic in the process. So the first thing you might obviously notice is that we are integrating over singularity at the moment zero. One over zero. Not good. Not good. But the cool thing is it's a removable singularity, so this is the only good thing about it. So we are going to remove the singularity. And at first I want you guys to notice that this right here is actually an even integrant because sine is an odd function and then we have an odd function over an odd function giving us an even function. Meaning even function over symmetric integral just turn this integral into 2 times the integral from 0 to pi. This 2 and this 2 is going to cancel out to 1 over pi. This is the first step. Let's just do this. So 1 over pi times the integral from 0 to pi of, well, this chunk sine n plus 1 half times tau over sine of tau over 2 integrated with respect to tau. And in my first attempt on this integral I actually choose to use addition formulae on here, breaking this up into cosine times cosine minus sine times sine or something like this. I really don't know and I really don't care. But it didn't work out any good because of singularity. You can definitely use complex analysis for this. It should work out, but I would like to choose a different path using the, well, some definition of the Dirichlet kernel that we were talking about in the last video. So turning this right here into 1 over pi times an integral from 0 to pi of the finite sum running from, and I'm going to use the original statement, from n equals to negative capital N to capital N of e to the i times small n times tau integrated with respect to tau. Okay, you see, this is just what we were talking about last time. And just as a little thought-provoking statement, <laughs> if we would just integrate this term by term, this at the moment wouldn't turn out any good just because of this singularity that we have. Be, be, because we have this term when n is equal to zero. Okay, if we integrate this, we have 1 over i times n times this chunk right here. But if we plug the zero into there, it wouldn't turn out any good. So this is already one of those singularities. To get rid of this fact, we are going to split this up into three partial sums. After that, it's going to make perfect sense and it's going to go really nicely from there. So let's bring the 1 over pi to the outside. Then we have, okay, integral from 0 to pi. And at first we have a sum running from n equals to negative n to negative 1 of e to the i times n times tau. Next we have this part with 0, just this little part where we plug in 0 into here. So this is e to the 0 of power, this is just 1. So plus 1 and then plus the last part just with those signs changed. Integral from n equals to 1 to positive capital N e to the i times n times tau integrated with respect to tau. I hope you can see where this came from. And with this move right here we have actually removed the singularity, which is really good. Okay, now we can move on. Um, yeah, we can break this up into three integrals. So just integrating each part step by step. So this is a d tau from 0 to pi and also we have this right here from 0 to pi d tau. Okay cool. Now we have broken this up and now we can actually integrate term by term right here. So we have 1 over pi. This first term is just going to be tau from 0 to pi. This is just pi. So the first part is pi. This is quite good. Next up, we have the sum, we can interchange this finite sum with this integral sign and integrating the exponential function is quite easy. So we are going to end up with a sum running from n equals to negative capital N to negative 1 of 1 over i times small n e to the i times n times tau from 0 to pi. 
And we actually have nearly the same thing right here, just with the boundaries on the sum changed. So plus sum running from n equals to 1 to capital N, 1 over i times small n, e to the i times n times tau, from 0 to pi. Okay, Julio, <laughs> that's a lot of input once again. At first I would like to distribute this pi into this 1 over pi, this is going to give us 1, and then we have this chunk right here left. Let's bring the boundaries to the outside, you could say, and let's focus on those two parts because we want to manipulate them a little bit. What we can do, we can actually introduce a little substitution, some k once again, where k is nothing but negative n. So this is going to run from n equals to capital N to 1, but by convention we are going to sum from the lowest term to the biggest term. So this is just going to be the same sum overall. So we can rewrite this, just for clarification purposes, as the sum running from n equals to 1 to capital N of 1 over, okay, we were changing n to negative n in the process, so negative i times n, e to the negative i times n times tau. Okay, I hope you can see where this came from. Okay, on the first part, we are going to get a 1 plus 1 over pi. And now we have this chunk right here. In the end, we are going to get something from 0 to pi. Those are our upper and lower bounds. And now we are going to bring those sums together. So summing up from n equals to 1 to capital N, our 1 over i times small n. I'm also going to factor this right here out. Okay, and now we have e to the i times n times tau. Minus e to the negative i times n times tau. Okay, cool. And I hope you can, can remember our definition for the sine, namely that sine of x is nothing but e to the i times x minus e to the negative i times x over 2 times i. So if you multiply both sides by 2 times i, we are going to get that this right here is nothing but 2 times i times the sine of x. So this right here actually is nothing but 2 times i times the sine of well, i times n, uh, n times tau, I'm sorry, n times tau. Okay, so we are going to get 1 plus 1 over pi, and then we have this finite summation from n equals to 1 to capital N of, okay, i and i is going to cancel out to 2 over n sine of n times tau from 0 to pi. Okay. If we plug 0 into here, the sine of 0 is just 0, so this is going to cancel out. And the cool thing is, our sine right here, every time we are at pi, negative pi, 2 times pi, for example, so a multiple of pi, we are always going to end up with 0. So no matter what you do, this is 0 and this is 0 in the limits. So overall, our integral is just 1. So you see, there was quite some trickery involved, but that's a really fun integral. It, it's just so much fun, it's such a cool exercise, and this is why I wanted to present it to you guys. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and recommend the channel if you like, if you want to support the channel a bit more. Buy those t-shirts I created, support the channel on Patreon, whatsoever. And well, up until the next video, have a flammable day, I guess. See ja. Ah, Kiro sieht zum ersten Mal richtig Schnee. Ich mm. <lacht> weiß kaum, was abgeht. Ah, Kiro.